Good evening. My name is Milica Radicic. I'm a scientist and an engineer. My team and I can do magical things in the lab. We can take your skin or blood cells and turn them into your own little strips of beating heart tissue. Uh, we build supportive microstructures for the cells to assemble in using techniques initially developed in the computer chip industry. And then we bring these tissues to life using uh, electricity. And in a magical like transformation, we can literally go from skin to heart or blood to heart. Things that were unimaginable just two decades ago. And over the years, we've done many useful things with these tissues. For example, we have used them to help us understand what causes heart disease in people who have high blood pressure. And we are currently trying to understand what causes heart disease in a group of patients followed at the Toronto General Hospital who have heart rhythm disorders. And to make these tissues even more useful, and more widely available, as a group, we had to learn how to become business people without having any training in business and start a company that is called Tata Biosystem. This company is involved in commercial drug testing for pharma companies. And this enables pharma to test their new drugs in human heart tissues before they're given to the volunteers for the first time in phase one clinical studies. And at the same time, these tissues help us decrease the use of animals in research. But the reason I'm here tonight is not to tell you about our science. There is actually a bigger reason. And I'm here to tell you why I became a scientist. So people often ask me, how did you get there? How did you uh, decide to become a scientist to begin with? And when I talk to other women who might be older than me, they usually say, well, I wanted to do it, but there were no positions like that for women in my time. And when I talk to younger women and girls, almost exclusively, they say, oh, science is too hard. How are you able to do it? It's just too hard for me. And the statistics in Canada are not encouraging. And despite significant efforts of the recent decades, women still occupy only about 20% uh, of positions in science, technology, and engine engineering and math fields, which is often abbreviated by the word STEM. And significant efforts are still being invested to change this. Uh, for example, Engineers Canada recently launched the initiative called 30 by 30 in an effort to have 30% women amongst licensed professional engineers by year 2030. And then many people ask, well, when should we start encouraging girls to enter STEM, STEM fields? Should it be in high school, in elementary school, or in kindergarten? I want to turn this question around and ask, when should we stop discouraging girls from entering the STEM fields? We literally start discouraging them the moment they're born. And uh, there are still allowances sold for babies by famous children's companies that say smart like daddy or cute like mommy. And this is actually, I downloaded this yesterday. It's free shipping if you make an order. Uh, <laughs> so we are encouraging girls to be uh, cute. And there are many other examples of children's toys and games that sound similar messages. It is at these earliest ages that girls, girls learn that math and science are too hard for them. And it looks like that, unfortunately, from the moment they're born, we are discouraging girls away from the careers in STEM. But actually, the true reason I became a scientist is not because somebody encouraged me with the words to pursue science. And it wasn't because I was a part of any special program that promoted STEM education amongst girls, although I commend and fully support such programs. It was actually just because of the beauty and the magic of the natural world around us. Uh, as a young child of four or five, I was mesmerized, uh, just like many of us, by the night sky and the multitude of stars you can see in it. And I thought that I would surely become an astrophysicist when I grow up. And then a simple toy like a kaleidoscope was also magical. The way the light is breaking, bursting in color, 
And I wanted to know uh, where are the stars coming from and what causes the light to break in a, in a kaleidoscope to create these images that I can see but I cannot uh, touch. Then one day I got a hold of a microscope and I saw that there was an equally amazing world to be explored, but it was just very, very small. And it is truly to this day that I experience the same excitement every time I look through the microscope to see our beating heart tissues. And it is with this same uh, childish curiosity that I'm still mesmerized by beautiful colored images of our cells. It's almost like the night sky, but these are actually real heart cells that we grow in the lab. And it is the exploration of the beauty and magic of the natural world around, around us that led me to seek STEM programs in both high school and university. My message today is that it is time for us as a society to validate every girl's excitement uh, about uncovering the beauty and the mystery of the natural world around us. And speaking to all girls and women in this theater and all around the country, I want to make one thing clear. You are beautiful and the world around you is also beautiful and at the same time mysterious and it is yours to be explored, and you are the perfect person to lead this exploration. Thank you very much.